start already a bit, I mean, for general remarks, so I will not show any monkeys, unfortunately. <laughs> My point of view is uh, history of mathematics, astronomy, but also I'm working in mathematical research. The people who brought me here are working in archaeoastronomy, and they are just now in one of the other rooms, so probably I don't know any of you, and the problem is really, but we cannot see it on the screen. Uh, Okay, I see. Um, I didn't really know what to prepare for you because I don't know what you are mainly interested in. Ah, muito obrigado. Um, and um, <clears throat> so I hope to have a mixture and will deviate from my slides in certain parts where I think other information is more interesting and important for you. <clears throat> so what, you, what do you see here? So this is the Rede Metropolitano de Lisboa. Uh, it's a graph, so we heard already about graphs and also network analysis in this, during this day. I want to propagate very much graphs in confrontation to network analysis, and I hope after my talk you will understand a bit. So this is just a graph concerning the vertices and edges, but the edges are colored uh, with four colors and uh, showing the metro lines of Lisboa. So, uh, maybe a bit unusually to, to have colors instead of numbers or letters or, or destinations. Uh, now I hope to use this. What do I have? Maybe this is easier here. Yeah. So the same <coughs> graph again. Only on, on Friday or Saturday I found uh, that upstairs you have this uh, piece of art which I didn't know about. And there you see graphs and geometry, which fits very much to my talks here during this meeting. This is called Commissar. Uh, and um, <clears throat> so this is uh, the same, more or less, I would say. So now the four metro lines are um, shown by four vertices of this graph. Uh, drawn in these four colors, and uh, what is special with the Lisboa network is that every line meets every other line exactly once. This is not at all the case for such systems. It means that you have to change at most once, whether this is the most, uh, the shortest way, that's another question. <clears throat> and um, so what you, we see here is the same graph, apart from the colors, you see, you can, uh, because this is a planar graph, you can draw it like uh, downstairs. Uh, then you have no edge crossings, but the, the better property of the, the, the above uh, drawing is that uh, all four vertices are equal. Here you have a special vertex in the middle. And uh, so these are the, the six meeting points. And now we have also a coloring of the edges. So two edges are colored violet, and the others have different colors. So what I do with uh, metro lines and uh, changing stations and so on, ah, this is a general <coughs> um, view at some of these structures. So these are graphs and configurations. Configurations are similar like graphs. I don't want to go into detail now. Um, so what you see here, uh, on top is the so-called Pasch configuration. Pasch was a geometer of the 19th century. This is exactly the, the Lisboa network if you forgot about all these stations in between. And then the dual structure, if you want, if you exchange or interchange vertices and edges, then you have a real graph, which I showed you already, the, the top picture or the, or the down picture, that's the complete graph on four vertices. Uh, we can also draw the Levy graph, which has 10 vertices. So in the middle, you have a graph consisting of 10 vertices. So the old vertices and the old edges are, are new vertices. And this is so-called bipartite graphs, which also shows the, 
the situation in an equivalent way. <clears throat> so what I want to do here is a very short introduction into graph theory. Um, graphs are relatively unknown in the scientific world, maybe not in the field of linguistics and language science, maybe not in biology, but in the rest of the scientific worlds, and very fashionable is social or, no, or social network analysis or network analysis, but this has uh, come up only in the last 40, 50 years, uh, and the graph theory is very, very old. I will show you a part of this. Um, well, trees are very special graphs, uh, graphs without cycles, but we can offer you all kinds of graphs you need, and you have colored graphs, weighted graphs, labeled graphs. So I would say for every possible application in science, you could find a suitable graph. <clears throat> the tree of life, evolutionary tree, Stammbaum. And now we come to a historical period of the middle of the 19th century, where all these four fields were quite close together. So this is biology, say Darwin, chemistry, Language science, August Schleicher was mentioned in the morning, and mathematics, um, these are just a few names. I could add more names. And we can build a complete graph with these four vertices, B, C, L, M, and six connecting edges. Again, it's the same graph. Um, <clears throat> you see, the same colors as above, but now, these vertices do not mean metro lines, but uh, scientific fields. And I want to discuss in more detail the two violet edges, biology and language or linguistics, but probably most of you know this if you are a bit historical interested. I will more focus on the second edge, which is chemistry and mathematics, which is probably not so much known to most of you. <clears throat> and the other four edges, this is still to investigate how direct the interaction was. Uh, for instance, uh, so chemistry and also some parts of mathematics was mainly developed in, on the British Isles in those years. And the Darwin is always uh, told to be so I mean, uh, isolated in the scientific world in England, but who really knows? There's an interesting astronomer, Hamilton in Dublin, but I think they were in contact, and maybe there are also links between, say, chemistry and biology, uh, and, uh, f okay, but this has not really been investigated. So for biology and linguistics, we have August Schleicher, and Ernst Haeckel in Jena. So they met there only for a few years because August Schleicher <clears throat> died very early. We saw this Stammbaum already in the morning. There are maybe some of the dates here are wrong. I'm not so sure. But Schleicher published several books and papers and tried this tree um, model in various ways. And um, so when Darwin had published his uh, book in English, it was translated into German, and Heckel read it and uh, made it known to Schleicher because he was a gardening, a hobby gardener. Yeah? And, uh, but Schleicher thought it may be interesting for gardening, but that's exactly what I'm doing in, in linguistics. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so, but I, I suppose this is more or less known to you if you are a bit interested in history before 2001, of course. If, yeah, well, um, you see, and the, the big, big event, I think, for, for Darwin was this uh, Heckel speech in Stettin in 1863, where he made the Entwickelungstheorie, was the German name at that time, when he made this known to a larger audience for the first time. <clears throat> now, chemistry and mathematics. You see, what we, in mathematics and graph theory, used today is more or less chemical notation which the chemists needed throughout the 90s. So they developed it around 1850 when they saw the structural formula for a molecule is not enough. There are different chemical substances which have the same some formula, but they differ very much concerning chemical properties. And so they tried several ways and then, but I start at the back. <clears throat> so this is the first 
paper here where the word graph is used in the German language. The, the, the author was a Danish mathematician, Julius Peterson, and the title of his paper is The Theorie der Regulären Graphs. So graphs is the English plural of graph, the German one would be graphen, and he, in his paper he says, Englische Verfasser haben für ähnliche Figuren den Namen Graph, cursively, yeah, eingeführt. Ich werde diesen Namen beibehalten. So in this, in this paper, graph is just an English foreign word which he introduced into a German language. And the one who coined this word graph was James Joseph Sylvester. So above you see a, a more complicated graph, the famous Peterson graph, which he discusses in his paper of 1891, uh, which has only 10 vertices, 15 edges, a lot of interesting properties apart, uh, in comparison to what I showed you before. <coughs> um, yeah, I think in, so in this paper of 1878, James Joseph Sylvester uh, introduced this word graph as a short form for graphical notation. And I think uh, this was published in Nature, existing already in 1878. And um, maybe it's interesting to, for you, for some of you, how he comparises the four uh, the, the different fields. Chemistry has the same quickening and suggestive uh, influence upon the algebraist. So algebra is a part of mathematics. As a visit to the Royal Academy or to the old masters, uh, it's easier for me here, may be uh, supposed to have on a Browning or a Tennyson. Indeed, it seems to me that an exact homology exists between painting and poetry on the one hand and modern chemistry and modern algebra on the other. In poetry and algebra, we have the pure idea elaborated and expressed through the vehicle of language. In painting and chemistry, the idea in enveloped in matter, depending in part on manual processes and the resources of art for its due manifestation. <clears throat> yeah, how many minutes do I have? Three? Three? Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, social network analysis or graph theory, you see. Uh, in the morning, we heard the three biology talks or primatology talks. And the first two graphs were used very much. This, the third speaker used network analysis in his talk. But I, I, I like the, the third talk much better than the, the two earlier ones. So it's not a question of dogmatics or so. It's just that easy that graph theory is very old. So the earliest graphs, if I had more time, are from the, I would say, 8th century before Christ. And these are singular events, but there was a real theory starting around this period, 1850. And we have developed all kinds of theorems, of proofs, of methodology, of terminology. And most people who work in social network analysis, not everybody, but most of them, don't know anything about these results in graph theory and invent the wheel again and again. And this is a bit disturbing, I would say. So I have uh, 30 minutes in our workshop on Thursday and hope to add some more details if time allows. Also, I hope to have learned more about you and your fields of research, and then I can better evaluate what could be interesting for you. Um, muito obrigado. I brought you one of these old graphs. This is an ancient map, Tabula Poitingeriana. Maybe you've heard about it. It's not, it was not mentioned to be a map. It was, ma it was framed to, to be a graph, because you see here vertices. These are towns, and you have streets as edges, and uh, the whole it's a bit like this painting upstairs. It's a six meters or seven meters long piece which goes here from the Iberian Peninsula and from Ireland up to Sri Lanka, a map of ancient Roman times which has been reproduced in the Middle Ages somewhere. If we are honest, we don't know where. And uh, among one of these towns, of course, there is Olisipona, and maybe Lisboa in the 14th, 15th century could be a place where this uh, 
remake was produced because Lisboa was the meeting point of cartography, of inventions, of explorations, and so on. And there were quite a lot of exchange between southern Germany and Portugal in those times. So that's one of the reasons why I show this here. Maybe one of you know something or in combined research, we still have to find out where was this copy made because the, the amount of information on this map collects information which nowhere at no time was in a single place. Um, I think this is the last which I produced, yeah. So again, thank you very much. Thank you.